May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Well, it's good to see all of you again today. God uh, continues to bless us, to bring us together uh, so we can praise and worship him. Let's go uh, in our Bibles of have it uh, to James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16 and that uh, scripture reads, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. A fervent prayer is passionate and intense. We've prayed several times here today. And we've prayed fervently today. I have a question though. Which of the following do your prayers most closely resemble? A wish made by throwing a coin in a fountain? A distant hope of a child's experiences when daydreaming of something he or she wants to have, or a desperate plea made in the face of imminent disaster. Which of, of the following do your prayers most closely resemble? Well, if you surveyed books in a Christian bookstore on prayer, you'd find varied and often conflicting advice. Some authorities insist that a, that a successful prayer is scheduled. Others favor impromptu prayer. One writer may say that fasting should accompany prayer, but another tells us to pray in any circumstance. Still another might say that prayer is best done when alone, though someone else urges us to join with others in prayer. Some claim that prayer requires careful preparation and thought, while a conflicting authority may say that prayer should flow spontaneously from our hearts. Well, what is prayer? Well, a, a dictionary definition for prayer is a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. Well, God is the one we make our requests and expressions of thanks to because he is the only one who can and has responded perfectly every time. Another person can't respond at all or is unable to give the right response every time. They may be able to give the right response sometime, but not every time. God's response is the right one every time. Now you know that if something is mentioned a lot, it's usually important. In my study for this uh, sermon, I learned that there are about 650 different prayers in the Bible. And the number varies according to the version of the Bible, but in general, prayer seems to be referenced over 600 times. So that means that it's pretty important. A prayer is an essential part of everyday life for us. A rich prayer life is the foundation for praise, worship, and devotion. We can't expect to grow in our spiritual lives without fervent prayer. You know, Christ, who are we are to uh, imitate, rose early and often in order to pray. There's a, there's a scripture in Luke chapter 5 verse 16 that says, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Remember, he prayed all night before naming his 12 disciples. At Luke chapter 6, 
verses 12 and 13, it says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went unto the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. So Jesus himself prayed often and long. Now we don't always get what we want when we pray. But if we trust God, we'll always get what we need. We don't always get what we want, but we'll always get what we need. The key to that is trusting God. In Philippians chapter 4, verse verse 6, I'm going to read verse 6 and verse 19. Now we know these scriptures, but I want to always remind us of things that, that, that has been given to us that we enrich our lives uh, with Christ. Philippians 4, 6 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for, he, for all he has done. Now verse 19 of that same chapter is this. At the same, and the same God who cares who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his riches in glory, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. The scripture also tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Again, remember what I said was we don't always get what we want, what we want, but we will always get what we need if we trust God. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 say, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Now this means that if we ask God for anything according to his will, that he will hear and respond. Now he'll hear and respond because what we're asking is not contrary to his will, but it's according to his will. In uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer, we sang it this morning, Uh, it's actually Jesus' the model of prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. Uh, He said that that when we pray, we should ask for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't ask God for things. Prayer doesn't exclude personal requests. Matter of fact, uh, it says also in John chapter 14, verse 14, uh, uh, Yes, ask me, ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. So, we can ask for anything in Jesus' name. He gave us the authority to ask in his name. But it must be according to the will of God. And if if we ask in the name of Jesus, under his authority, we definitely will be asking uh, something that is within the will of God. Now, if we want to know what God's will is, God has given it to us in the scriptures. That's why it's important that we read and study the scriptures, so our prayers will be on solid ground. Now, here's what prayer is not. Prayer is not some mystical process where we call out to some force. It's not a power with which we create things or speak them into existence, ordering God around like some bellhop who art in heaven. We cannot speak anything into existence. Now there's a scripture we often use, and I've heard it, and I've even done it in the past until I knew better, where when we're praying, we say, we speak those things that are not as though they were. Well, if we read the scripture, 
that we're quoting, we'll find something different. Uh, that's at Romans chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. I want to read that because that's a scripture we use when we try to speak things into existence. Romans 4, 16 and 17. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, all the seed not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith, faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So it's God who calls things that are not as though they were. The power of prayer does not flow from us. The power of prayer flows from God. It's not special words we say, or the special way we say them, or even how often we say them. Now we hear people say there's power in prayer, or when somebody prays we say that prayer was powerful. Well the truth is that the prayer itself has no power. The power is in the person that we pray to. The power of prayer is not based on a certain direction that we face or a certain position of our bodies. The power of prayer does not come from the use of handkerchiefs, candles, oils, or beads. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of those things as long as we realize there's absolutely no power in them. The power of prayer comes from God. He is the one who hears and answers our prayer. Now, prayer is not magic. We can't summon God as though he were a genie, uh, waiting to grant our wishes without regard to our circumstances or the consequences. Prayer does not make demands. While we can make requests of God in prayer, we can't make demands. God is the creator of the universe and does not take orders from us. Prayer is not a guarantee against suffering. You know, Jesus uh, told his disciples and us uh, that uh, in, chap in John chapter 16 verse 33, he said, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. It also says in 1 Peter, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. A prayer is not an opportunity for us to show off. You know, sometimes when we're in corporate prayer, uh, some of us pray long prayers, use big words, uh, we're showing off. But prayer is not an opportunity to show off. Jesus said this, don't, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone could see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. Prayer is for our benefit, not God's benefit. We were made to function best when we are in a proper relationship with our creator. And prayer starts with that relationship. Okay, so that's not, that's what prayer is not. So why do we pray? Okay, well we pray because prayer binds us to God. Prayer is a communication process that allows us to talk to God. 
Now, he wants us to communicate to him, to talk to and to hear from him. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, these are Jesus' words. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. So, God wants us to talk to him. Uh, prayer gives us the opportunity to present our requests to God. Prayer is a place where pride is abandoned, hope is lifted, and supplication made. When we pray, we should stop faking it, and let's be honest with God. And prayer is a place to do that. Prayer is a place of admitting our need, of adopting humility, and claiming dependence on God. Prayer is the exercise of faith and hope. Prayer is the privilege of touching the heart of the Father through the Son of God, Jesus our Lord. Prayer allows us to worship and praise the Lord. It also allows us to offer confession for our sins. Now, all of these things involve communication with God. Now, God is personal. He cares for us, and he wants us to come to him in prayer. Remember, he's ask, seek, and knock. He wants us to come to him in prayer. There's a scripture that we read every week here that also speaks to that. That's 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. We read it every week. It says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. So God wants us to come to him in prayer. Now, we know that God is omniscient and that he knows what we need before we ask. But we're still told to ask and we're told to be persistent in our asking. Now, Jesus gives us some exa an example, a couple of examples of that. It, one was in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before he was arrested and uh, tried and crucified. Here's an example of persistence in prayer. It's in Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 44. You meet Peter, James, and John. He asked them to come with him and wait with him in prayer. Uh, and after, having, after telling them to uh, wait and watch with him, at verse 39, chapter 26, it says, He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. And that he prayed that. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watching, pray, so that you will not give in to temptation for the spirit is willing but the body is weak then Jesus left them a second time and prayed my father if this cup cannot be uh, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it your will be done that's twice when he returned to them again he found them sleeping for they couldn't keep their eyes open so he went to pray a third time saying the same thing. There's also, uh, Jesus also talks about persistence in prayer when he told the parable of the widow and the uh, wicked judge. Now that's in, if you want to read that, that's in Luke chapter 18, 
verses 1 through 8. There was a judge who was wicked. This is a parable. Uh, uh, and there was a lady uh, that made a request to him. I'm going to read this quickly. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, uh, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about, the, about people. A woman of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. When he, he, even he re- rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Now, there are other places in Scripture where we're taught, uh, where, where we're told to be persistent in prayer. Prayer gives peace of mind. When problems and challenges arise in your life, do you feel overwhelmed with anxiety? Well, the Bible assures us that if we turn to God in prayer, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds. That's at Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. I read it earlier. Don't worry about anything. Instead, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Prayer gives comfort and strength when you're facing trials. If you're facing extreme stress, perhaps even life-threatening or tragic circumstances, the Bible says that he comforts us in all of our trials. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and, 3 and 4, Paul writes to the church in Corinth, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Prayer can bring wisdom from God. Now some decisions that we make can permanently affect us and our loved ones. If we pray for wisdom, God will guide us to make right decisions. He said if we need wisdom to ask him. That's in James chapter 1 verse 5. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11, it says, The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing stream. You can trust God with the days ahead, for he's promised to guide you. Prayer can help us to avoid temptations. Um, In Luke chapter 22, verse 39 Uh, This is Jesus again. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give into temptation. In the Lord's Prayer, in a model prayer, Jesus also said we should ask God to protect against temptation. He says, do not let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray for forgiveness of sins. Uh, Again, the the scripture that we do every Sunday says, Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive them their sins and restore their land. 
Now we're also told to pray without ceasing and in all circumstances. Prayer is essential in our lives and one of the things that really show our faith in God. 1 Corinthians 5, 15 and 16 says, Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So what does it mean? What does exactly does it mean to pray without ceasing? Does it mean that we'll walk around with our heads bowed and our eyes closed all day? Does it mean that we're supposed to devote ourselves to reciting ritualistic prayers or forms of prayer? Well, of course not. It means that we are to consciously turn our thoughts into prayer. Especially when those thoughts turn to worry, fear, discouragement, and anger. When we go through our day in unceasing prayer, we're showing our dependence on God. If we don't have this attitude throughout the day, we may start to depend on ourselves instead of depending on God. When we live our lives or go through our day, through our day in constant communication with God, then our minds are constantly on the things above. Scripture says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth, for you, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Here's something I, I, I read or that will help us understand constant prayer. For Christians, prayer should be like breathing. You don't have to think to breathe because the atmosphere exerts pressure on your lungs and essentially forces you to breathe. That's why it's more difficult to hold your breath than to breathe. Similarly, when we are born into the family of God, we enter into a spiritual atmosphere where God's presence and grace exert pressure or influence on our lives. Prayer is a normal response to that pressure. As believers, we have all entered the divine atmosphere to breathe the air of prayer. So being constant prayer is second nature. It's like breathing. Now, governments can't stop prayer. Your location can't stop prayer. Your enemies in the spiritual realm can't stop prayer. We can pray anywhere and at any time. Prayer is always available to us, but we must take the initiative to do it. If we do so, God is eager to hear us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, help us, and uphold us. I'll end with this. It's from a, a sermon given a long time ago in 1872 by a fellow by the name of Charles Spurgeon. Now it's in Old English, so I'll try to read it so we can understand it. Here's what Charles Spurgeon says. Never give up praying, not even though Satan should suggest to you that it is vain for you to cry unto God. Pray in his teeth. Pray without ceasing. If for a while the heavens are as brass and your prayer only echoes in thunder above your head, pray on. If month after month your prayer appears to have miscarried, and no reply has been given to you, yet continue to draw nigh unto God. Do not abandon the mercy seat for any reason whatever. If it be a good thing that you have been asking for, and you are sure it is according to the divine will, if the vision tarry, wait on it. Pray, weep, entreat, wrestle, agonize, until you... Get what you're praying for. If your heart be cold in prayer, do not restrain prayer until your heart warms, but pray your soul into heat by the help of the ever-blessed Spirit who helped our infirmities. 
If the iron be hot, then hammer it. If it be cold, hammer it till you heat it. Never cease prayer for any sort of reason or argument. You know what your, what your God has told you, and if you cannot reply in every difficulty which man can suggest, resolve to be obedient to the divine will and still pray without ceasing. Never, never, never renounce the habit of prayer or your confidence in its power. Remember those things. Prayer is a way that we communicate with God. And God wants us to communicate to him. Not only us talking to him, but also listening to him. Sitting, being quiet, and hearing his voice. It may come in many ways. It may come uh, through a friend, it may come through scripture, it may come through a song that you heard, it may even come in an audible voice. But sit and listen and expect to hear from God. Now, if you expect to hear from God and you want to hear from God. And all these things I've said about prayer, all these promises that I've, I've uh, uh, given about prayer. I said earlier in the sermon that Jesus gave authority to ask in his name. Well, he only gives that authority to those of, who follow him. And in order to be a follower of him, you must believe that Jesus is God's son, and you must confess that. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing, by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. So, if you want to make sure that your prayers are heard, and you want to be sure that, that, God, that God will answer your prayer, then you need to be a part of his family by accepting his son as your Lord and Savior. So if there's anyone here today who has not done that, now is the time to do that. And immediately, once you do that, immediately all of these promises